Okay, so this video is going to look at nomenclature um, from the AQAA specification. Um, one thing I'm going to say before it, it begins is that this is going to cover the naming of all molecules from Unit 1 and Unit 2. So it's not concentrating on just Unit 1 or just Unit 2, it is all of it, all in one. Um, which to me seems like the easiest way to do it. So do bear in mind if you're sitting a Unit 1 exam um, soon that you don't need to know all of this and the same applies if you're sitting in unit 2 exam, you don't need to know all of this, there are bits and pieces, but if you do know it all, then you're covered for both exams, which makes it a little bit easier. Um, so, nomenclature. What is it? It's essentially naming uh, organic molecules. So, or naming stuff, um, and when I mean organic, things that contain carbon, hydrogen, oxygen mainly. Um, it's, it's governed by these people, UPAC, uh, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists, I believe. Um, and it's it's a way of naming things so that really no matter where you were to go, you would always have the same name for molecule. So it, it, there are still common names for certain molecules. Ethanoic acid, for example, um, is often called acetic acid. Um, but there are the problem is those common names differ from places. The aim is really that this way of naming molecules really, I, I guess, is international. Um, and goes beyond sort of language or I think that's the hope anyway or that certainly people don't confuse common names so anyway um, nomenclature I'm going to go through this um, in what I think is the best way possible um, and I'm going to start by just defining kind of a couple of terms the first is homologous series so homologous series now um, an an homologous series is uh, it's basically a family uh, family of compo compounds, so family of compounds that all have the same general formula with same general formula. Uh, example, CN, H2N plus 2, uh, which would be your alkanes, which I'll come on to later on. Um, the next term and really the second one and, and last is functional group and really this is just it's um, an attached group that defines a compound's properties uh, and for example we could say a carbon-carbon double bond um, and again I'll come on to what that is in a second so the aim then of nomenclature is that um, if you have a molecule, um, any sort of molecule, so it could be a molecule that looks like this for example, then the aim is that you could name this, um, and this where there are numbers here there should be carbons, this is just how one step of the, the whole naming process, So, but it's just using nomenclature and actually with just a little bit more than sort of what you would need in the AS, you could name this molecule quite easily, and the name of this molecule ends up being that. Um, 6E13E, 18 bromo, 12 butyl, 11 chloro, 4 8 diethyl, 5 hydroxy, 15 methoxy, trichosa, 6 13 diene, 19 iron, 3 9 diene. Um, which really kind of doesn't really matter because you're never going to get anything like this, but the point is, following simple rules, you can actually get to this uh, and, and work out how to name this. And those are rules I'm really going to go through now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show two tables first of all. Um, which you need to know, so you can by all means you could copy it down, pause it, and copy it down. Or if you know it, and it's just revision. Then by all means, just glance at it. Um, but the two tables you need to know for definite are these ones. Okay, so there's two tables here. We've got one in the corner here, number of carbons, and then um, a prefix that's that's uh, going to be given by that um, according to that number. And the bottom here, we've got a table with quite a lot more sort of detail in. Um, a lot more information I should say. So first of all we'll have a look at this thing. So number of carbons and I'll explain what all this means in a minute. I'm just going to put it all here to start with. So depending on the number of the carbons depends how we're really going to name the compound. It depends on the prefix for the molecule we're going to end up with. So if there's one carbon we say it's meth. Two we say eth. Three prop. Four bute. Five pent. 6 hex and so this is the beginning there will be other things added onto this which leads me on to the second table here so in terms of I said earlier on about unit 1 and unit 2 split 
this is unit one this is unit two um, that said actually some of the alkanes alkenes does also come into two certainly in the isomerism um, but I think there is all there might be a little bit in the unit one although I might be mistaken actually um, okay so we've got homologous series again the family the name of the uh, of the family of molecules we've got alkanes alkenes haloalkanes alcohols aldehydes ketones and carboxylic acids we've got the functional group for each the the part of the molecule which defines it as being in this homologous series uh, and then we have a prefix uh, which you can see only really affects haloalkanes a suffix uh, and then an example of each now I'm not going to spend any time on this because this is just information that you need to learn. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through rules of how to name and then I'm going to look at some examples from here um, and, and how we could name them. So, rules for naming then. So, I reckon there's six rules really and those six rules will, provided you know them and you can remember them, will guide you through um, naming pretty much any molecule. What you will have to do though or well, what you will find after after the amount of time is that those rules will just become sort of second nature once you've done enough practice and you won't need to keep thinking about oh, what was the second rule, what was the third it will just happen um, but to start off with then one first thing count the longest carbon chain and at this point I can't really stress enough when I say the longest um, I mean longest and actually in here I should I suppose I should say um, in here we would put longest consecutive carbon chain so longest consecutive carbon chain and decide the prefix And when I say that, I mean the prefix is either meth, f, prop, but, pent, or hex. And that's all you need to know for AS and A2 actually as well. So and decide the prefix. Now, a trick here of examiners is if you have a molecule like this. So I've got one, two, three. So I've got three carbons. Therefore, it's going to fall into here. It's going to have a prop as its prefix. What people often get confused is they, and this will make more sense later on when we look at attached groups, if you see something like this on the end, that is still a carbon. So the way I would always do this, when I get a molecule, is I draw a line that joins the longest groups. And I can see now, it's not three with something else attached. It's actually one, two, three, four. And I'll, I'll put that into an example later on so that actually makes a bit more sense. Um, because at the minute that might be a bit confusing. But just bear, when I say count the longest chain, the longest consecutive carbon chain, you must do that. That's the key thing. Um, second one. Look for the functional group. And decide the suffix of the ending of the name. And so what I mean by that is that if I go, oh, I, have a, I can see this functional group, the OH group, I'm going to know it's going to end with anol. Um, third. Um, but actually no, we're only going to have five in total here. Third, we're going to say number the functional group. If required. Um, and again, later on this will some of this kind of feels like it's a bit sort of itty bitty and you don't really know what's happening once you get to the end it should all fall into place and it'll make sense so number the functional group if required four um, look for additional I'm going to say things attached to the chain so this is extra to the chain. These are things that are attached to the chain. Ex additional things. Um, and name them. Five. Actually, there will be six in total, actually. Number the additional things. 
and 6 put the name together right 6 put the name together what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to apply this to a molecule so that you can see what I mean by all this so here I have a molecule and I'm not going to say what it is we're going to work it out and we're going to follow those rules so rule number one count the longest carbon chain the consecutive carbon chain and decide on the prefix so longest carbon chain here we go it's just going to be straight across here it's a nice easy one so straight across decide on the prefix so six carbons therefore our prefix is going to be hex okay so that's that done two look for the functional group and decide the suffix Okay, so look for the functional group and decide the suffix well it's only carbons and hydrogens with this guy here attached this chlorine's attached here therefore I know that with it being a carbon hydrogen um, backbone with this chlorine attached I've got a halo alkane therefore the fact that I've got a, a, a CL there is going to denote that I've got a chloro and in case you're wondering where I've got that from um, back on the table here Chloro, bromo, fluoro, iodo. So that depends on really the halogen that's attached. In this case, I've got chlorine, so it's chloro. Bromine would be bromo, iodine, iodo, fluorine, fluoro. So I've got a chloro alkane here. So it's a halo alkane, specifically, it's a chloro alkane. Number the functional group, third step. Now, you could do this actually one step earlier or at the start, it doesn't matter. What you should do is you should number these carbons not only say oh there are six but actually say right this is the first second third fourth six, or whatever now there are two ways you could number these you could start here or you could start here and say one two three four five six or one two three four five six now a good rule of thumb is to say that the functional group wants to have the lowest number possible so starting here it'd be one two three four five that would be on the fifth carbon whereas this side one two it'd be on the second so we'll number from the left to the right this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, now chlorine here is on the second carbon. Yep, second carbon for the chlorine. Right, step four. Look for any additional things attached to the chain and name them. Number the additional things and put the name together. Well, we don't have any additional things here attached. Um, Therefore, we don't have to worry about that. Additional things that you might find would be things such as if there was a CH3 attached within the chain, not on the end, that would be classed as a methyl. A C2H5 would be an ethyl. Uh, C3H7 propyl, etc., etc. So, methyl and ethyl. Um, Obviously, again, you could have these chloro groups attached. If it wasn't just a chloroalkane, you could have a chloro group attached to anything. An alcohol, it doesn't matter. So do be aware. And then what I mean, so the potential there, there is a CL. We could have a BR. We could have an I. Or we could have an F. And they are named as per that table earlier on. Chloro, bromo, iodo, fluoro. In this case, we haven't got anything else attached. So we know we've got a hex. We know we've got a chloroalkane. So it's going to start with chloro and it's going to end with ane. I've got a number where my chlorine is and the way I do that is the number comes first so to write down here the actual name for this molecule would be 2 chloro hexane so this is all one word chlorohexane is one word numbers are always followed by dashes um, and if we have more than one number, then we'd have commas in between. And I will go through more examples of this later on. Um, and as I said, it sometimes seems a bit sort of strange as you're going through these. You kind of can't learn everything at once, I find. You have to do examples, and that, you pick them up through that. So your number, where the thing is, and the number comes before the thing it's telling you where it is on the chain. So 2-chloro. Oh, my chloro is on 2. Well, here it is. Hexane is the... Um, type of molecule and the number of carbons in it so 2 chloro hexane so I'll do another example actually um, another kind of a, a halo alkane we'll do one that looks like this so 1, 2, 3, 4 ok so I've put more on this one to make it a little bit more difficult 
but we follow the same steps as before. Longest carbon chain. Well, we've got one, two, three, four. Now, this is the point where people look at this and they say, well, this is attached to the carbon chain. It's not part of it. But actually, if you were to draw this out, it would just be C with three H's. So this is definitely part of the carbon chain. So longest carbon chain here is going to be one, two, three, four, five. That tells me we're going to have a pent there. What kind of molecule have I got? What have I got attached? Well, I've got hydrogens, I've got two chlorines and a fluorine. That means I'm going to have chloro and I'm going to have fluoro attached. Now, I've actually got two chlorines. And the way we name something, if there's just one of something, we just name it as chloro or fluoro. If there's two, it's di. Three is tri. Four tetra. So in this case I've got dichloro. Now what positions are they all on? We need to number our carbons going from uh, one end to the next. Now we could start here, one, two, three, four, five. But again, these being our functional groups, they would be at the latter end. If we start here, they would be lower numbered. So we'll start on that side. One, two, three, four, five. So we've got the fluorine at one and the chlorines at two, as opposed to them being at four and five so these numbers are therefore lower okay nothing else is attached I'm happy with that so let's put this name together now when putting a name together where you have a couple of things you do it in alphabetical order and that's alphabetical order on the thing not on the number so just because it's die and in this case it's not doesn't really work that well the D does not count is not counted in the alphabetical um, ordering it's the C of the chloro and the F of the fluoro but either way the D comes before the F so it doesn't matter in this case so I've got a number where the chlorines are first of all because chlorine is my C now instead of just writing two I have to write two two I'm telling them that there are two chlorines and each one of those chlorines is on two so it's two two dichloro. Never just try and write 2-dichloro. It's 2-2 two, two, because I could have 2-3-dichloro, 1-2-dichloro. This is 2-2-dichloro. Two, two, dash 1-2-dichloro. One, one, pentane. So 2-2-dichloro, two, two, 1-fluoro, pentane. A bit about this again. Numbers are all, if you have two consecutive numbers, you have a comma in between. Anytime there's a letter and a number, you have a dash. So letter, number, dash, letter, number, dash, letter, number, dash. So commas in between numbers, between letters and numbers, you have a dash. So 2, 2, dichloro, 1, fluoro, pentane. Um, right, let's look at some different examples um, of some different, um, slightly more, do we get, we'll put a few more things in and see if we can work those out. So what I've got here, same rules as before. I'm going to speed these up slightly and not just spend, kind of go through them as slowly, but longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got pent is going to be um, our prefix for our, our main, um, main naming part of it, I guess you could call it. Functional group. Carbon hydrogen, we've got an OH here. Well, looking back at our table, OH is an alcohol. So this is a unit two part now. OH is an alcohol. Now, naming wise, anything else attached? No. Number the carbon of the alcohol group, this hydroxy group as it can be called. Well, we could start this side, but again, it would be too high. So we're going to start here. One, two, three, four, five. Now, alcohols are named slightly differently. The OH group is named within the name itself. So we start with pent here. So it's pent. It's normally, to break this down slightly and, and explain what I'm going to do, normally you could say you would you would have the pent and then you would have the anol. Okay? So it's the pent anol. When you number though, you actually put pentan and it's the anol is that split it, it's split in between. So we go, oh well carbon's two, so it's pentan two ol. So the numbering occurs within the name, and this is true of all alcohols. So pentan two ol. If I were to knock a carbon off, 
and I'll just replace that with a hydrogen this would become butan 2 one two three four same as before but this time it's going to be butan 2 and again I could knock one off and it would become propan 2 etc okay there's another molecule that's named in this way um, and that's the alkenes they are named in a similar way where the numbering comes within the name and not at the start so an alkane for example I could draw one like this so two carbons and four hydrogens now in this case longest chain two not difficult so I'm gonna have F and numbering wise you could say well it would be F one ene Ene being because I've got my double bond carbon there, which is the functional group for the alkenes. But you don't bother naming it as ethoneine. You actually ignore the one in this case. So it just becomes ethene. And the same is true of an alcohol such as um, ethanol, where there should be hydrogens around here. You wouldn't, na you wouldn't number this or name this as ethanol. You would just name it as ethanol. Because it doesn't matter where the OH group is on this, you will always have the same molecule. It will always be ethanol. There it would always be at the first position. There it would be at the first position that would swap. So ethanol regardless. So here then, ethene. So if I give a better example really that has the actual numbering involved, this, stick another carbon on. And another carbon. So here we have an example where I can have the double bond in a couple of positions and it would be different. So it could be here or it could be here. In this position where it is, it's on carbon 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Because I'm still trying to keep the number the lowest for my functional group. So it's 1, there's my group between the first and the second. So I would name this, therefore, 4 carbons, but 1, in. So but one in. If I were to change this and I were to go, you know what, I want it different position. Switch some hydrogens around here. Um and then there we go. Now what I do is I say, well, one, two, it's at my second position, so it's but two in this case, not but one in, it's but two in. So it's always go count. When you get to the carbon that has the double bond attached, that's the carbon you number it at. So you don't need to worry about it being but two, three in, because it's between two and three. It's just at the carbon, it's at the first carbon you get to that the double bond's attached to. So one, two, there is but two in. Um, go for another example. We'll have a look at the next two type of molecules that have similarities between them. So, first one we could draw would be like that. Second one would be like that. Now, this is a more difficult one to sort out because the way that this works is that they are they're very similar in the way that um, first of all that that they appear um, yet they're named very differently so we have a carbon double bond to an oxygen if that is on the end of the chain then we have an aldehyde if it is not on the end we have a ketone and these are named as anal and anone so the case this, that I have here, we've got two examples then. Um, so one, two, three carbons here. That on the end. So prop ending and now. This one we have three again. So prop put the ending on and known because my carbon is linked in the middle there. Now. There's a couple of things to say here, really. The aldehyde, you never have to number where the group is because it will always be on the end. So always start counting from 
that end. So if there's something else attached here, I would number it based on this being the first carbon. So this never has to be numbered. So you'll never see propan two, propan two al. It doesn't exist. Ketone, on the other hand, is in the middle of the chain, and the best way to show you this would be to add some more. Um, I'm going to rub this out. Well, I'm going to keep that there actually. The best way to show you this is to add some more carbons on. Now we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five carbons as our longest chain. So we'd have pent. This is named similarly to the alkene and to the alcohol. So the numbering comes in the middle of the name. So pent and one, two, three. One, two, three. It's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter where we are. So this one would be pentan three own. If I were to move this and I were to put it here instead, what I would find, make sure that I fix this molecule so it's not wrong. This is now pentan two own because the carbon double bond to the oxygen is on the second carbon, so that must be numbered. Again, when it's propanone, you don't need to number it because it can only be in one position. It cannot be anywhere else. So it's not propan 2 it's just propanone. Because going back to that starting molecule, very quickly, when you have the propanone like that, if it's here, it becomes this. If it's here, it becomes this. If it's in the middle, it's propanone, not propan 2 So just propanone. Now, I'm going to go into the aldehyde, but I'm going to show another example, because I already mentioned how the aldehydes are named, the fact that you name them um, based on, or starting with this carbon on the end. And there's another one that's also named like that, and that is as follows. So, do like this. So this, longest carbon chain, but this time my functional group is denoted by this COOH which tells me I've got a carboxylic acid. Therefore, as per the table, butanoic oh, acid. Two separate words. No numbering is required in simple cases like this. It's on the end of the chain, and it always will be AS, so there's no need to number. Anything attached to this, though, you would, of course, number. So I'll get rid of this. We'll put on a chlorine. So one, two, three, four. Four chloro butanoic acid and I could put on two more if we really wanted so we could say it's be a trichloro now and it would be four 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 so four 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 trichloro butanoic acid and again here we've kept our functional group the, the carboxyl group as our lowest number so that there has been a fairly sort of quick tour through these. And the best way to get by on nomenclature is to practice, is to look at them. But actually, once you get the hang of it and the naming, it isn't too bad. Um, and what I'll actually do is I'll, I'll just write some common examples out of each one, just so you can see sort of how the naming is, how the naming works again. So, so let's start with the alkane, so like ethane, propane. Uh, I'll do some alkenes. So again, ethene, pent, Two en, hex one en, for example. Uh, we'll go down. Um, what was next? Um, one chloro propane. Two 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 tri chloro butane. Um, Ooh, what should we do? Um, one bromo. Don't need a comma there. Want a dash. One bromo. Two chloro pentane. This is an example here where that alphabet comes into play. But the B and the C there, we've got bromo being coming in. Um, alcohols. We could have something as easy as ethanol. But then as soon as we get up to propanol. We're having to name it as propan one or two ol pentan two ol um, three. We'll go to ketones and the aldehydes. So 
ketone propanone being the first ketone you can have and then you might have hexan 2-ohm etc aldehydes fairly simple ethanol methanol propanol etc carboxylic acids again quite easy to name butanoic acid methanol noic acid etc one final thing I would actually like to to mention just because it does occasionally or has come up where should I go I'll go up here which has come up in the past is you're expected to know sort of general formulas and all the rest and, and to be able to take a formula so I could say um, C4 if that look like a 4 that would be good C4 H8 Draw the structural formula, draw the displayed formula for this molecule, C4H8. At this point you'd perhaps say, well, um, it's, it looks to be an alkene to me because it follows that CNH2N, which it could be. It could be C, as an easy example, with all the correct hydrogens attached, blah, 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 and all that there. The other thing that could be, though, is it could be a cyclo compound. What I mean by that is it's a compound that's actually where there are these attachments made. And again, the dashes here are showing hydrogens. So this here is a cyclo compound. It's called, it would be called cyclobutane. So it's, it's named because it's cyclo because the carbons are all attached into a ring. And the butane just because there, there are four carbons present within that ring. So you could have cyclohexane. It's a common one. Cyclopropane. You can't have cycloethane because it, can't join to itself, uh, but you can have the propane. You can have cyclopentane, um, cyclohexane, etc., etc., etc. And that's hopefully reasonably clear. And actually, just I actually mentioned something there that I haven't touched on yet, um, which I will do now. Which is perhaps it's a late point to do it, but hopefully still sort of labours the point. Um, if I'll go and use an example, these here. This would be classed as a displayed formula. And it's called that because it shows all of the bonds within the molecule drawn out. If I were to draw a displayed formula for this one down here, I would actually need to do this and draw that bond out. So displayed formula is when all bonds are drawn out in this um, letter and stick way. You'll also see maybe structural formula. A structural formula tends to be a condensed version of this drawn out formula. So for this, the structural formula would be CH3, CH2, CHO. And that links into um, the table that I showed you earlier on. This one would be, oh dear, um, C, CL3. You wouldn't be expected to name something like this. CH2, CH2, COO. H. The other thing you can come across, and I'll look at a different example um, with this, would be something like, hold on a second, the term molecular formula. So molecular formula. And you may or may not have come across these terms before or not. So say I've got something like ethanol, CH3, CH2, OH. I could actually simplify that just to be um, C2H6O. C2H6O. <coughs> now, that gets the point across and tells you what's within the molecule, what atoms, but it's really bad at telling me how it looks, how it's drawn out. The structural formulae, these things here, tell me exactly what the molecule should be drawn as. In this case, the brackets denote that you've got the three chlorines there. Um, but this one here, you got the carbon, three hydrogens, carbon with two hydrogens, carbon with a hydrogen and an oxygen. Never write this as COH, because OH implies that you've got a uh, an alcohol group. CHO is the way around to do the aldehyde, and I, that is on the table earlier on. This, on the other hand, doesn't tell me anything about the molecule. Okay, it's, it gives me very little on that, and that could you could find a different molecule with that same uh, with that same formula there. And I'm trying to think of one now, and I can't think.
that's perhaps not a great example for that but there certainly are different molecules that share the same molecular formula and that's where it ties into isomerism so try to avoid writing things like that um, unless it asks you to stick with structural formulae these things or if it asks a displayed formulae then or a displayed formula draw it including all of the bonds right there's been quite a lot there quite a lot of examples and all the rest I hope it's been of some help if it hasn't, tell me where it could be better, please, in the comments below. Um, but again, I do hope it has helped people understand. Um, and there you go. That's how you name organic molecules.